Hello guys! In the previous video we created a SQLize migration starter template and a simple migration. In this video we will create a more complex migrations, so without further ado, let's get started. Let's go ahead and clone database migration service template that we created last time and we call it Travel API DB Migration Service. Now let's go ahead and change directory into Travel API DB Migration Service. Let's go ahead and install dependencies and create env file. We can do cp.env.example to .env. So in the env file, we can just change the database name to travel API and update the port to 33061. Let's go ahead and create the travel API database in MySQL Workbench create schema, we'll call it travel API and click apply. Before we start creating any migrations, we need to design the database. I usually do it in Visual Studio Code and what I use, draw that IO integration, right? This is unofficial extension, but it works very well. So please go ahead and install it. All you need to do then is to create a file with a .dio extension. And then it's going to bring up the whole uh, draw.io kind of interface here. Right? And what I use, I use entity relation, right? And I use the table right here. So if you don't see entity relation, you can click onto more shapes, right? And you can, you can choose whatever you want. You know, you can even choose AWS. They have a lot of entity relations here. When creating migrations, first design database schema. Think through how your tables relate to each other. Think about data types, what values can or cannot be null, what values uh, have to be unique. If you have relationships, think what you would do to the child records when parent record is updated or deleted. Also think what fields may need to be indexed. After figuring out all of the above, you can start creating migrations. So let's go ahead and take a look at our tables, right? The first table will be users. So our ID will be uh, UUID. Right, so we're not going to be using uh, auto incrementing integers, we're going to be using UUIDs, right? And the name is going to be variable characters as well. Email, email verified will be a date time, and then password is going to be variable character as well. And created it, updated it will be timestamps, and we'll just have a default values for them. The next table will be roles again, primary key will be UUID, and the name variable character unique and not null, right? And cre again, created and updated at timestamps. And we're going to have a joint table that will connect users to the roles. And what we're going to do is going to be only two entries. And the first will be role ID. And the second will be user ID. And both of those entries will be primary keys and also foreign keys. As in, you can see, foreign key will be a role. It's going to be referencing roles table and it's going to be one to many optional relationship so this means that role user cannot exist without roles as well as role users cannot exist without users and this is how we model a many to many relationships so our users can have many roles and roles can have many users so the next two tables are travels and tours so let's take a look at the travels table. Again, primary key will be UUID, name, variable character, not null, description will be text, right? We're gonna also have a slug, which will be a variable character, it will be unique and will be not null. There will be is public flag, right? So it's gonna be Boolean and default value will be true. There will be also number of days, which is gonna be a small integer, not null. And again, we're gonna have timestamps. So now tours, also primary key is UUID and uh, will be a foreign key, travel ID. So the same kind of relationship. So travels are going to have many tours, right? And tours will be optional for travels. But for tours, travel is going to be um, not optional, right? It, for the tours, travel has to exist. But for travels, tours may not exist. So now name, variable character, not null. Starting date will be date. Ending date will be date. Then price, we're going to be using decimal. Uh, the total length of the decimal will be 10. And the decimal points, we're going to set it 4. 
and default value will be zero. So price can also be modeled as an integer, right, where you put the number of cents and uh, you can just divide it by 100 to find how many dollars. However, in certain cases, you know, the decimals are still used for prices. And then we also want to have actually four decimal places rather than two decimal places, because in some accounting systems, you may have a fractional sense, right? And if you have a lot of sort of products or something, those fractional cents will add up. And again, we're going to have timestamps created at and updated at. Now that we designed the database schema, we can start working on the migrations. And let's start with the users table. We already have create users table migration in our starter template. Let's go ahead and reuse it. So we're going to do module exports and create the up function, the async one. And in the query interface, we're going to create table users and we'll put ID, which is a type will be UUID and the primary key will be true. So the next property will be name is going to be SQLize string allow now false then email SQLize string as well again we now going to allow now as false and we're going to set it unique as true and then email verified it there will be SQLize date password will be string uh, we're not going to allow nulls there as well and created that we're going to do SQLize date allow null false and we put a default value as SQLize literal current timestamp we're going to be doing the same with the updated at now we need to create a down function. It's going to take a query interface and it's going to drop uh, the table users. The next migration we will be creating will be roles table. So let's go ahead and do yarn migration create name create roles table. This will go ahead and create a migration file for us. In the create roles migration, we're going to be doing again module export up function we're going to create table roles id again uuid primary key true name will be sqlize string and it's not going to allow false and we're going to have it unique so each role name will be unique in this table and then we're going to put timestamps again created it and updated it and in the down method we're going to drop the table roles now let's go ahead and create a pivot table called role users table this table will a link our roles to the users. This migration will be fairly simple. The role user table will have role ID, which will be UUID and will be primary key and it's going to reference roles and the key ID on the roles and on update we're going to cascade and on delete we will cascade. So we're going to be removing, uh, you know, the entry from this table if uh, the role is deleted. Same with the user ID, right? It's going to be UUID as well, primary key true and it's going to reference users an ID key on the user's table and on delete and an update cascade. So both of those properties are going to be both primary keys and foreign keys at the same time. And in the down method, we're going to drop the role user table. Now let's go ahead and create a travels table. Let's start working on create travels table migration. Right, ID again is going to be UID in the primary key. Name we won't allow um, now on that, all description will be text, slug will be a string, it allow null false and unique will be true. Uh, is public will be boolean, we won't allow null on that, but default value will be true on that. The number of days, it will be a small integer and we won't allow a null on that either. And created it and updated it will be the same way we did it for other tables. Now on the down function, we're going to just drop table travels. Finally, let's go ahead and create tours table. All right, let's start on the tours table. Again, ID going to be UUID in a primary key. The travel ID will be also UUID and we're going to be referencing uh, travels uh, with a key ID. And on update, we're going to cascade and on delete cascade as well. So if travels is deleted, we're going to be deleting the corresponding tours record, right? Okay, we'll put the name string. We're not going to allow null on that. Starting date will be sequelized date only and ending date again, sequelized date only. Uh, for the price, we decided to do decimal. We'll put 10 uh, the, for the total length and and four decimal places. I'm not going to allow uh, null on that, but we'll put the default value as zero. And now we're going to put the timestamps again, created it and updated it. Okay, now in this table will also add index, right? And we'll add index on the travel ID, which is a foreign key. By default, foreign keys are not indexed. And if you don't, not going to have a lot of records in your tables, uh, you don't really need to 
index your foreign keys. However, if you're going to have a lot of them, right, and you foresee tables having millions of hundreds of thousands or millions of records, it's a good idea to put index on your foreign keys. So, but be careful with the indexes. Sometimes you may over index your data and then a read is going to be fast, but writes and inserts, creates and inserts, will, uh, it, but creates and updates will be slow. All right, on the down function, which is going to drop table tours. And that's it. We're done with our migrations. Let's go ahead and test them. Let's go ahead and do yarn migrate. And it seems like everything worked. Now let's go ahead and switch to MySQLize workbench or MySQL workbench and uh, check on the tables that are were created. Right. So now we can see the, the migrations table. Right, it's going to have our migrations, then we have user roles table, roles, stores, travels, and users, all the tables. And it's also a good idea to check, right, if the table was created correctly, right? So what are our ID? It's a primary key. It's not null, right? The name again, not null. And you just go ahead and check all other columns so you, to make sure you have them correct in the database, right? In case you make a mistake, you can roll back your migration, update it, and then migrate again. Well, then that's it about migrations. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.